this tutorial, we are going to talk about setting up an object like this glass here that contains liquid. This is not a fluid simulation thing. This is if you've got a product type of illustration, such as a bottle or a glass, that has some liquid inside of it, and you need to set it up so that it renders correctly. So let's come over here and take a look at a file that I have in Blender. I'm going to bring up a start file here. And we have basically this glass object. And as we have it right now, it's just an unfilled glass. And what we need to do is we need to configure the geometry so that the light rays and the ray tracing process traverse from one object into the next to produce the refraction correctly. Critically, the thing that we need to understand is that for the ray tracing process to work correctly, the ray tracer has to understand when it's entering and then exiting a polygon mesh. It knows that it's coming into one surface because the normals are facing outward relative to the ray's direction. And then it knows when it's leaving that surface because the normals are then facing in the opposite direction relative to the ray. So we duplicate part of the glass geometry to produce the liquid component, thinking that we still want the glass to be a complete closed volume, noting that the normals maintain their face direction in the duplicate geometry. Then we cap off the object to become a closed volume representing the liquid. But the liquid normals are wrong as they're facing inwards for this now closed volume, and a ray won't see it until it hits the other side and it won't render correctly. So we need to flip the liquid normals so the ray tracer knows it's entering this new liquid object. But now the liquid and the glass have overlapping polygons with opposing normal directions, which will cause visual artifacts. One of the methods that's used is to offset the liquid geometry just a bit from the glass geometry to put a gap between the two. But this isn't ideal, and it can result in something that doesn't look quite right. So the ray tracer is now dealing with this gap. In this case, it causes the liquid to appear quite dark. So the way to deal with this is to simply remove the overlapping geometry from the glass object. It doesn't need to remain a closed volume. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here into my front view, and I'm going to isolate this from the rest of the scene by pressing the question mark key, and I'm going to make it so that we can go into an X-ray view. I've already marked in the geometry where I want the fluid to be, so I'm going to press the tab key. And we can look right here, I've got normals turned on. So let's take a look at this. You can see that the normals on the outside are outward facing. And as we come up to the top right here, the normals continue to face outward as it wraps around. And on the interior, they're also outward facing. Okay, so let's come over here. I'm gonna turn these off for right now. And I'm going to come over into face mode, into select box. I'm going to marquee across these bottom polygons, and I'm going to come over to select, and then I'm going to, to do a select more to go up one more level. So those are the polygons that are going to make the geometry for the liquid. So we need to come in here now and isolate this from the current mesh that we're working with. So I'm going to bring up the context menu and we're going to come down to separate by selection. That becomes its own object. I'm going to press the tab key to leave edit mode because we're still in edit mode for the original object. I'm going to press the slash key, the question mark key to leave isolation mode. And then I'm just going to select this interior object, which is going to be the liquid now. And I'm going to re-enter isolation mode by pressing the question mark key. Tab key takes us into edit mode. And then what I'm going to do is let's, let's come back over here again and turn on the normals because we want to visualize this. They're still in the inward facing direction, which is correct if the glass was unfilled. But we need to reverse them because the liquid needs to have outward facing polygons so the ray tracing process knows that it's entering a new volume. A key, come over to mesh, come down to normals, and then flip, and that will flip the direction. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to cap off the top. I'm going to leave X-ray mode. In fact, I'm going to turn off normals. We don't need those anymore. We need to fill the top. Edge mode, I'm going to double click on the edge here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come up here to the context menu and we're going to invoke new face from edges. Liquid produces a little 
there's a technical term for it that I've forgotten, a little lip that pulls up onto, say, the glass. And we're going to form that now. So we're going to come over here to the Inset Faces function, click, hold, and drag, and I'm going to pull in just sort of an arbitrary distance like that. I will zoom in over here, and then we need to move this down. So I'm going to press the G key. By default, it's going to move freeform, but now when I press the Z key, it will constrain it to just the Z direction. Now I'm going to come over to the Loop Cut tool, click here, and then I'm going to come down to the Shrink Flatten function, and this will move all of the geometry along its own normal direction. But we need to switch over here to Tweak Mode because that will allow us to select this geometry and move each one down just by selecting the geometry. If you don't do this, if you're still in Select Box Mode, then you have to move the screen and come and find this handle right here, which is way off screen for us. So that's why Tweak Mode is great, because you can just grab this and now move it down just a little bit like that. Okay, so this is the core foundation for what we need for the interior liquid. But now we need to do a little bit of geometry adjustments to finalize it so that it forms correctly. So what we need to do is come over here and just see what happens right now if we take this and simply visualize the subdivision surface. So I've already got a subdivision modifier on here, but it's turned off. So when we look at this, you can see that it's malformed. The lip right here, the interfaces with the glass, that needs to be a sharp edge. So I'm going to double click that, and then we're going to come up to edge, and down to edge crease. And I'm simply gonna start mousing left to right until you start seeing that form. What you can just do is once you start seeing it formed, just click the mouse button, and then down here where edge crease shows up, just make sure that's a value of one. That just makes the subdivision not subdivide across that boundary. But you can see on the interior here, let me turn off optimal display, we have a lot of polygons pulling into this interior area that we want to be flat. We don't want any subdivision pulling in there because it'll actually show up in this reflective refractive object. So what we need to do is, let me come over here and turn off subdivision. We need to pull in another polygon row right here because this is starting to curve up and it needs to be a boundary between this large flat area and the curving area. So we're going to come back over here into face mode, select this polygon, and with the inset faces function, and because we're in tweak mode, I'm simply going to grab, click, hold, and drag, and pull inward. Okay, so now we come over here to edge mode, and this edge we want to make become a hard edge. So I'm going to press shift E, which is the crease function, and you can just start mousing until you get a little bit of movement. And sometimes you're not really going to visualize it very well. So this is what I do. I simply click and then I come down here and I simply type in a value of one. And that will correctly make that a hard edge. So now when we come in here and visualize the subdivision, the curvature will not pull into here. These spiky polygons these are all perfectly planar along in here. We don't get curvature until that row of polygons that we set up right there, okay? So the next thing that we do, we're almost done, is we just need to come in and assign a material to this. So what I'm gonna do is press the tab key and then the question mark. Let's go into X-ray mode. And we need to come down and just simply assign something. Now, it's brought in glass, which is the material up here. Let's come over, remove that, and I already have a liquid material assigned for it. Now, the liquid material, let's come over to shading really quick, is a somewhat more complex setup, and you could use any transparent material here. But I'm just gonna show you that my index of refraction for liquid is a little bit lower. Typically, for most liquids, it's going to be 1.33. And then you can come over here and render it. And there you go. So that's the proper way to do it. Isolate it, flip the normals, cap off the top with a little bit of a lip right here, 
and apply a liquid material, you could use the glass BSDF, which is super easy. I've got a slightly more complex setup to give sort of this liquor look to it right here.